the next speakers will tell you, will give you more out of the box way of uh, how to think about vertical farming, how, to, how can we create that ecosystem. It's not that easy. It's not that easy, especially a lot of people are coming on this planet. And um, we can do it if you listen very well to the next speakers. And the first speaker is, uh, is, is I'm a big fan of him. He's, uh, he's kind of famous. He's Mark Derno from Urban Farmers. And uh, he has recently, yeah, come on stage. I can come, come up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has recently opened uh, the Den Haag Vertical Farm. In, uh, and on the seventh floor, he has a big greenhouse. And on the sixth floor, he has aquaculture, fish production. Yeah. That really actually makes it the first skyscraper vertical farm. In Europe, at least. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty excited about that. So thank you very much for that, Mark. Yeah. I'm going to give you the stage. Give a warm applause for Mark. And uh, thanks enjoy. very much, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the invitation to be here. Uh, my name is Mark Derno. I'm the managing director for Urban Farmers Benelux. And on the train in this morning, I realized that I've never rehearsed this presentation. And I've never even given this presentation before. I've given a lot of uh, blah blah over the last five years about urban farmers, about vertical farming, about aquaponics, but it's always been to investors for investment or to stakeholders for partnership, and it's never been talking about the opening of our farm and the actual operations of our vertical farm. This is the first time I've done that. So today is actually a really big experience for me too, and, uh, and I'm glad that I can share that with you guys because we just opened on the 20th of May. So. Yeah, thanks, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Urban Farmers' vision, we believe 20% of all the fresh produce consumed in the city could and should come from the city. This is from a, a research paper that was done by the Zurich University of Applied Sciences back in 2011-12, based on a Basel as a case study. That vision is what drives our company and rather than going into the details uh, verbally, I'm going to use uh, some media to, to get you on board with it. What if the food you eat every day was grown right in your neighborhood? Wouldn't vegetables grown across the street taste better than those from across the ocean? And what farmer in his right mind would ever choose to stick his produce in a shipping container for a month? Local always wins. And local is closer than you think. Urban Farmers is on a mission to bring farming back to where people actually live. With our rooftop farm solution, we've created a revolutionary way to grow food in the city. It's a real farm on a big scale with a small footprint. We grow local varieties instead of global commodities. Food is harvested fresh and never sees the inside of a shipping container. This is our mission. Before you're out of bed, we're already harvesting for you. Every morning, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, and fresh fish. At our farms, we can grow a wealth of varieties without the field and without the chemicals. Definitely the highest quality harvest in the city, and maybe in the world. In our system, tropical fish and trout provide the perfect fertilizer for plants. And plants purify the water for the fish. And now you too can enjoy this perfect symbiosis. Vegetables, fruit, and fish are delivered right to your store and go directly into your shopping cart. You can see, smell, and taste the freshness. The time is ripe. Now the food that you eat every day can be grown right in your neighborhood. Urban Farmers, the fresh revolution. 
So I hope that gives you a flavor of, of what we're doing. The images there were shot in Switzerland from our Swiss farm. We also have a farm in The Hague. And the technology we use there is aquaponics. Many of you in the room will be familiar with aquaponic. Um, just to give a quick overview to those of you who are not, aquaponic is the symbiosis of fish and vegetable production. Put simply, we have a recirculating aquaculture system for fish production. And those fish are producing nutrients all the time in the form of ammonia that we convert through to nitrate. We can then use that nitrate-rich water to fertilize our plants, who essentially clean the water for the fish, bringing it back into circulation. The goal here for us is to try and be as resource efficient with zero residues. So the resources that we're using should be coming from the city. That means we don't want to use topsoil from agricultural land because it doesn't make sense to us. And the fertilizers that we use should also be developed on site. We don't have pigs and cows and chickens in the city yet, so fish is a logical solution for the fertilizer production for our plants and also as a source of protein uh, in the system. So when we started out back in 2011, 2010, if you consider when the concept started with Andreas Graber and Roman Gauss, we thought we were a, 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 an aquaponics technology supplier or system designer. And we couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> what we actually do <laughs> is just about everything along the supply chain. Of course, with partners, but we realized that we had to develop and finance our own projects. People weren't going to come to us and just pay for an aquaponics system. We had to engineer, procure, and construct those projects. And thereafter, we have to operate the farms as well because it's an unproven business case and it's high risk. We also do all of the marketing, and we have licenses and technologies and software that we're going to use for the scale up and ramp up of our urban farms. This is an image of our first farm in Basel. I'll just touch very briefly on that. It was constructed in 2012 as part of a larger research and development uh, project with the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. It's a small rooftop greenhouse, but it was the first one in Europe, and it gave us an opportunity on this 250 square meter site to test the technologies, test our operations, test marketing, which is essential if you're going to be successful with your vertical farm in your locality. Thereafter, in 2013, when we were scouting for new sites, we were lucky enough to come into contact with the Gemeente Den Haag, or the, the Hague municipality. At that time, the Gemeente were forward-thinking enough to try and include uh, Stadtslandbau, or urban farming, in their city planning. So they'd started a Stadtslandbau initiative, which we applied for, tendered for, and essentially won the, uh, the use of the rooftop and the sixth floor of this, this signature building in The Hague. Uh, if you haven't been there, I invite you today, of course. <laughs> you need to come and see this place. I'll show you some images. Um, but the, the, the building itself was large enough, strong enough, and we had the right partners to start uh, an interest that we said, well, this is, this is worthwhile pursuing. This is a render of the farm. I always like to start with the render now because it's nice to go from what I was shoving in everyone's faces for two years to try and drum up investment. And later, I'll show you an actual picture of the farm. The, the projection that we used was for 50 tons of fresh vegetables every year and 19 to, to 20 tons of fresh fish per annum. And the IRR target was 4%. That's, that's conservative. Our actual target is 7% over a 20-year period. So if you spoke to me during the years 2014 to 15, the chances are that I shoved this picture in your face and started telling you about how intelligent it would be for you to give me some money to let us build this just now. The, the vision was to make it spectacular, to make people excited about it, to get people into the farm and joining our fresh revolution. Really, the fresh revolution of uh, urban farming is a grassroots movement that we are part of, so it was important to us that people would get excited about this, and, and really the farm is a, a large marketing tool for us as well. Uh, I highlighted the, the capex because we hear a lot of uh, soft and fluffy conversations about salads, about how nice it is to, to be ecological, but at the end of the day, you guys want to know some hard figures too. The capex is 2.5 million. <laughs> it's there. And ultimately, we built it. This is not a render. This is the rooftop greenhouse in The Hague that we are operating just now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>
I mentioned one partner, which was the municipality of The Hague, uh, and th we had three other very important partners to make this a reality, our UF consortium partners. Uh, that was Coppert Biological Controls, Priva, and Reichsvan. We work really closely with these companies to make it a reality. They've provided support with us, and if you're going to go into uh, a vertical farming project at this early stage in our industry, you need to have strong industry partners alongside you if you're going to make the technology work, and if you're going to have the right industry connections. So they're, they're, they're continuing to be a strong partner for us just now. On the marketing side, we also have strong partners. These are our gastro partners in The Hague. So you have to consider the partners from a municipal perspective, stakeholders from the industry, but also stakeholders from the market. These are gastro partners who are ambassadors for our brand and our product, and they talk directly to a consumer market. Ultimately, the consumers are the ones who are going to decide whether or not our vision is a success or a failure. Some quick facts, and I'm going to rattle through these a little bit because I want to save some time for questions and answers. We basically started with this uh, initiative for the, for the rooftop farm in 2014, in March. From there, we went on and did feasibility studies. We managed to raise the first uh, million of private investment. And from, from that, we were able to uh, make an application to the FRED revolving fund. You see the picture of the European Union flag in the bottom uh, of the screen there, which is mandatory now. Um, <laughs> so the, European, uh, the, the FRED fund is a revolving fund that is also looking for a return on that investment. So we do have commercial investors who are looking at this as a, as a going concern. Uh, building permit confirmation took through until September of 2015. We started the construction in November and we were finished by May with a 20th of May opening. We're still looking at that 4% IRR and in our minds it should be 7 this is a new industry. You have to be conservative about w the way you pr approach uh, promises to investors. Uh, so we're not saying that this is, uh, this is something for venture capital yet. There's no way that you're going to be able to generate 25% returns uh, with any confidence. So the way we approach it is to say, well, what business do we know and what can we promise based on the, the current capital expenditures? 50 tons of mixed vegetable production. So that's coming up to a turnover of around about 400,000 euros per annum in The Hague. 20 tonnes of fresh fish, you're looking at just under 200,000 euros turnover of, of, of fresh fish within the Den Haag. And then we have an event space, which is pretty spectacular, and we're using that for secondary revenues. The goal here is that on our EBITDA margin, we'll be hitting 30 to 35% with these, with these revenues. So um, this is a time lapse. It's not gone automatically. I wonder if somebody could press the button if it works. Yeah. Um, I wanted to take a chance to open up the, the, the presentation for questions and answers, because I can sit and tell you about what we've done, but it's probably more interesting if I can answer some of the specific questions that you have. So I think we've got how many minutes? A few minutes left that we could, uh, we could take some questions if, uh, if anyone's interested. <laughs> 